Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif Mercado, and this is the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode number 67. Hope you guys are doing well. It's Saturday night. Um, I don't know, what is it? March 7th, 2020? Um, Easy night. Easy night for us. We're just kind of, we're chilling. I told you guys when we're home, we we do nothing. We, we We like to chill out. That's, you know, people... Invite us out all the time. I'm talking about to clubs, to restaurants, to plays. And some people invite us to go to their cities, to go to their homes, to stay at their homes. And we get invited all all kinds of places. But we prefer to be home. We really, really like to be home when we're not on the road. So uh, we kind of made it a point. We were were going to, you know, uh, the plan was... Once Erica left and she went to the army, and it was just us, Adams out the house, that what we would do, so let's say this weekend that passed, we did the two shows in Texas. So that was a Friday and a Saturday night. So what we would have done is probably go out there on a Wednesday night and leave like maybe maybe from Wednesday to Wednesday, something like that, you know, and try to really, you know, take advantage of our time on the road and maybe we can you know go see some of the sites like uh san antonio is a beautiful place um actually we didn't do san antonio we did austin so uh but like when we go to san antonio we could go see like the alamo um when me and angel went to detroit we went to the uh, motown museum i love that um when we would go to san francisco we would go to like i think it's called fisherman's Wharf, Raff, reef Raw. Fisherman's Rock Reef. I think it's Reef. <laughs> so somebody, I'm sure somebody will co- correct me. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, from that area there, it's kind of cool because you look into the water and you can see like um, they have all the sea lions. They kind of congregate there. I don't know why. Maybe maybe people throw food off the, off the edge. I don't know. But if you look out into the distance from there, you can see Alcatraz, and that's that's actually a really really dope sight because you've seen it so many times like in movies and tv shows or whatnot and uh to then see it you know in in, you know live you know even though i didn't go on the island they had they do have a tour that goes on the island you actually take a ferry you go to the island it's kind of cool i I heard and you know they said it's all it's um it's haunted i think al capone was there a lot of real famous i think um i think like dillinger was there uh, a lot of famous um, criminals that um, that were there. Supposedly, it was like impossible to escape. Um, some people said because there are sharks. Um, other people say because the temperature of the water is so cold. I never really looked into it. I'm sure it's one of them. Um, are there sharks there? I would think there's sharks there only because there are sea lions there. You know, so I can I could see there being sharks there, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but people said that it was really difficult. And the people that did try to escape and try to swim never made it. They would drown or whatever. I, I didn't know. Like I said, I don't I didn't really look into the history. I kind of look at the surface of things. When I look at stories now. Some people go into stories and they get like all the details, people's names and the dates and what exact. Ah, man, you got to really, really. I have to be 100% interested. So sometimes I like the overall, the shell of the story. Yeah, you know, people try to escape um, Alcatraz and they drown trying to escape. Okay, that's that was good enough for me. I wasn't really into, yeah, well, this is what they did. They created a raft out of their uniforms and 
they try floating across and they you know I, I don't really get into that unless I'm really interested um, but I used to like to go go there I'll tell you one of the things I, used, I miss and, and it's crazy because I told you guys last I really don't talk about food like I don't go places to eat like people say oh man I want to I can't wait till I go to um, you know North Dakota because they have the best french fries I made that shit up, by the way. You know, I don't do that. Uh, oh, I can't wait to go to Japan to have the best sushi. Uh, I don't think about it like that, you know. Um, what are some of the other places, you know, uh, uh, people, you know, I'm going to go to Italy for the best spaghetti. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I think I have pretty good spaghetti here. My wife makes it pretty good, the way I like it at least. I might go to Italy and I like how they make it, you know? Might be too original. I might not be down for that, you know? So, um, but anyway, uh, I, yeah, I don't really go into, oh, but when I go to San Francisco, they have the clam chowder that they give you um, in uh, one of those bread bowls. And you see people walking around with it. So it's kind of, it's, and it's really good. I remember that being good, though. I do remember that being good. But I was young also, so I was like in my 20s. I don't know if now, like, I, I, eat, I eat stuff like that. I kind of, I kind of got to be home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of stuff this old stomach can't handle anymore, man. You know, so I like to, I got to be, I got to be close to the banyo, bro. <laughs> But anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, but that was our, our intentions. Our intentions were to, there's a lot, of, a lot of places we go to. We really don't see much. We go to Chicago. We've never been to the, to the, to the CS Tower. And even though I'm not too crazy about going up on a tower, I've been on the top of the world trade and look at what happened to that. So, you know, it's not really, um, but, uh, but sometimes to see, um, you know, famous places like where people lived. Like that's what I liked about um, the Motown. Now I was a huge. Well, I was really a big Jackson Five fan. Huge, huge Jackson Five fan. Like, you know, when I listen to Jackson Five records, it brings back my childhood because I always wanted to be a singer as far back as I could remember. You know, so I was a big fan of the Jackson Five and Michael Jackson in particular, as well as the Osmonds. So those were like the two main groups um, that I follow. The Beatles, believe it or not, um, I like some of their songs, but I, you know, I didn't grow up like. I grew up in the Bronx. We didn't really get into the Beatles. I, I mean, I, at least I didn't. Um, and um, but um, to go into the Motown Museum. Oh, and another thing. So I believe it was called the Man, the Man, the Music, the Magic, something like that. But anyway, it's the Barry Gordy biography. I don't know if it's an autobiography. I don't remember. But I bought that book a long time ago. I don't know what happened to it. Um, but if you guys get a chance, get that book if you're interested in something like that. Um, and, and it shows how he, you know, built the label. I wish I had one of those brains that retained stuff because it was such great stories. I read so many books and I guess my brain grabs the important stuff. So if it's 500 page book, I might grab a page. You know, I'm talking about combined information, maybe a page's worth, and the rest kind of gets, like, deteriorates, like it disappears, and my mind tends to um, retain important aspects, like with the Barry Gordy. I remember, you know, certain things. One of the big things that I remember is that he borrowed money from his family. It was $800 to start his label. So that was pretty interesting because they had almost like a family fund, and like the family had to vote, like if somebody needed the money, the family had to vote it and then they would give the money and then they would have to pay it back, I guess. I forgot how that worked, but, um, but that was pretty good. So, so I knew the story. I got really into the story and then to go to Hitsville, um, like you step in there and then also with all the movies that you've seen like they, they had the movie with the temptations and stuff like that where you saw Hitsville and then all the documentaries and so now here you go you're, you're stepping into this thing and it's like incredible it always it's always smaller than it looks on TV than you imagined you go down to the studio where they um you know when you go to the Motown uh, museum 
you know, by the way, it's just a house. And what, basically what happened was uh, Barry Gordy started buying off more homes in the neighborhood because people were complaining. So I think they have the one left, but like every house... Um, had like a, it was a different it was a different the, it, it functioned differently so you had one house where it was a studio you had another house where they taught you like etiquette so if you see how like classy like the Supremes and the Temptations and they had this classy look to them they were actually taught that stuff they, they were taught how to walk they were taught how to how to speak to the public and how to move and you know they didn't look you know, raggedy, they didn't look, you know what I'm saying, they look like very, they look very classy, and it was such a great idea, and it was such a great thing to do something like that, especially during those days, because, you know, everything was, you know, was uh, segregated, you know, and it took a lot, you know, <clears throat> even though people, you know, people loved R&B, and they loved this music, um, some people were, you know, they couldn't, they kind of, they couldn't really listen to it in public. They couldn't, they had to kind of do it on the down low. You know what I mean? So what they did is they took, you know, the stereotype of people, you know, these people that were stereotyped and they, they elevated them to a different, so that way they have this, a totally different image. So the image that were portrayed, especially by the racist people that were portrayed, you know, how they, how black people should be looking or sounding or walking or talking, Motown totally threw that away. They threw that away and they created, you know, people that were straight up upstanding and they, they, the etiquette was better than anyone else around them, you know, including the white people, you know. So, <clears throat> so it was, uh, and then they had another building which was like finances. They handled all the bookkeeping and stuff like that. So it was cool. They had all these. Right now, um, they only have the one house which kind of represents all of them, but is it is an original house and um <clears throat> so if you type in hitsville motown museum you'll see the picture so that's it right there um and it has like a little um also a little like a gift shop you go in there and buy some stuff uh, me and angel took a bunch of pictures uh in that it was we had a good time and it was so historic see that, that was the beauty about me and my wife is that even though we didn't grow up together we grew up very similar we grew up really loving the same thing so many i mean from the foods to the music to the passion um and and neither one of us knew anything about freestyle you know we it, we both ended up in it you know um it's nowadays that people you know focus on freestyle yeah i'm gonna be a freestyle artist so i'll be a freestyle producer back then it was all pop you know i um, mean i was more into hip-hop you know, but what I was what I was getting at was, you know, being able to travel the country and just going like I never been to South or North Dakota. Few cities I've never few places I haven't been to. And I've been to a lot of the country. Like I think I've been in every just about every major part of California, every major part of Texas. Um uh, Illinois mostly, you know, Chicago, Waukegan. Those areas, I've been by the prison, the Juliet prison. Is it Joliet or Juliet? Whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> um, and uh, um, oh yeah, and when I, when I, the first time I ever seen, this is crazy, the first time I ever seen Alcatraz, right? San Francisco, that area, it gets really like, I guess because of the heat, between the heat and then the water. And I don't know if it's the hills of San Francisco. I don't know. But it gets really, really foggy. Extremely foggy. Foggy to the point where you really can't see out into the water that, that much. So they took us to this restaurant. Beautiful Italian restaurant. And it was overlooking like San Francisco. It was really the bay. It was, it, it was overlooking the San Francisco Bay. And um, I remember we were sitting by We were sat by the window. And we're eating. And I remember the first time me eating in a restaurant. Because this was a very, it was a pretty expensive, you know, fancy restaurant. Like, the locals really didn't go here. This was like a little, a lot of tourists came here. I didn't know anything about it. Uh, we went there with um, Jerry Salerno from Metropolitan Records. So, we met him there in California. We were doing a show and then we met him out there. I mean, he was actually having a class reunion and we were invited to go to a class reunion. It was actually a class reunion in somebody's house. So it was kind of cool. A bunch of, um, they were all from like Stanford University. So they were all like mostly lawyers, but they were hippies. So a lot of weed and playing guitars and singing and shit like that. It was 
kind of odd, <laughs> but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, and I remember we were sitting there and I was facing the water, right? I remember eating and we're talking, we're talking. All of a sudden I look up and the fog had cleared. And when it cleared, it was Alcatraz, like right there. And you know, it's almost like when you saw, like even if you didn't live in New York, if you saw the Empire State Building or the Twin Towers, the World Trade, you knew it right away. And it was almost like, wow, I've seen this thing a thousand times in on TV, now I see it in person. It's really like no different than seeing a celebrity. You watch a celebrity all the time, and all of a sudden you see them in person, you're kind of like, mesmerized you're like oh wow you know that little starstruck kind of thing because you're seeing them on this screen so many times now you see them in 3d you see them they're live you know and uh and i remember seeing it for the first time and it was like wow it was amazing you know but there's a lot of cities that i would like to go to i've never been to north or south dakota you know it's funny i've been to san francisco several times you know i've never been over the Golden Gate Bridge. I've been over the Bay Bridge. I think that's supposed to be like the longest bridge in the United States or the world, I don't know. But I've never been through over the Golden Gate Bridge. I think I've seen it from a distance, that was it. Uh, I'll tell you another thing um, I've never done was, oh, um, I've done shows in both uh, Buffalo and in Canada. But do you know I've never been to my Niagara Falls? I've never been to it. So, um, and I would like to go. I'm not a big fan. Canada gives me a hard time because of my past. Like, I got to jump through hoops to go into the country. And, you know, everybody talks how great it is. I've been there about maybe six, seven times, maybe even more than that. Um, then they found out about my past. And now they make me jump through hoops to go into the country. And I just rather not go, if that's the case. Um, but uh, I've never been to uh, Niagara Falls. Um... What else have I have I not done? Uh, let me see. Oh, so L.A., though, I went with Angel. So, and good thing, because I had never, we used to go to California Bay Area all the time. And I remember it wasn't until I got with Angel, because Cover Girls were huge in L.A. Susie was more Bay Area, San Francisco, Salinas, you know, that Bay Area, which is more Northern California, whereas L.A. is Southern California. So, um um, Susie wasn't that big in, in L.A. Now she's actually more popular than she was back then. <clears throat> so I never went there with her. Once I got with Angel, though, like the doors opened up and I was able to go down to L.A. And we started making a lot of those trips. Those trips became quite often. <clears throat> and one of the things that I've never done and I've always wanted to see was Hollywood. Okay. Especially the Hollywood sign. And I remember seeing the Hollywood sign for the first time. Um, and I was in the street. And I think I was on like Hollywood Boulevard or whatever. And I remember looking up and seeing it. It was like another thing. You know, you see your whole life in movies and TV. And now you see it. And it's like, oh, wow. You know, it's, it's incredible, you know. And then to walk, do the Walk of Fame. You know, where you see the stars. What is it? Walk of Stars. Star Walk, I don't know what that Walk of, I thought it was a Walk of Fame. I could be, anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. All the stars, and when we went, it was like James Brown had just died. So they had his star like decorated. So they had like a little, you know, some flowers, like one of those stands with the flowers on it and flowers and stuff in the bottom. Um, and that's, it was a, uh, that's when we went there. Uh, my son was with us, uh, actually, and we took a picture with him on the on the Bruce Lee star, so which was uh, pretty cool. Me and Angel went back later on another time, just her and I, and I remember going to this restaurant, and it was crazy because I'm like, yo, I'm I'm cool with you know splurging on a good meal once in a while, just just because just to do it. I don't go chasing it, but you know, oh wow, look at this restaurant. You guys hungry? Yeah, yeah, let's go eat. Oh, wow. But look at the prices. Okay, well, we're here. Let's go eat. Let's, you know what I'm saying? And I remember that we went into the one in L.A. And I remember it was right next to the theater, that Grumman's Theater. Grumman's Theater. Guys, you got to excuse my freaking pronunciation. Some of these things I don't pay attention to how they're pronounced, so it, it doesn't really. So I, I kind of don't sit there and try to perfect it. But anyway, um, I remember going to this restaurant and we sat up there. It was a steak restaurant. That's what we were in the mood for. And they came. It was a beautiful place. And they served us. When they served us, man, I'm telling you, the steak was like the size of the palm of my hand. 
Um, I don't remember them giving us like any sides. It was a, a weird way. They gave us like some vegetables. It was weird. And the bill between the two of us came out to, with the tip, just a little over 200 bucks. It was crazy, man. It was crazy. And, um, and I was like, you know, and I don't mind. I'm like, okay, I've spent five hundred thousand dollars on, on meals I, I don't that's not the issue the issue is i left there freaking hungry i think we had to go to mcdonald's after that because <laughs> i was still hungry but anyway um yeah so you know so so things like that you know i would love to go and um i've never been to the grand canyon i've never been to the hoover dam um i lived in new york my whole life i've never been to the statue of liberty or the empire state Building. i went to the world trade once that was it so there's a lot of places that i, I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind going, you know. Um, Florida, I've seen quite a few attractions, and uh, never did the Everglades. Though I always wanted to do the Everglades. Uh, alligators kind of fascinate me a little bit. <laughs> so, but um, but anyway, so what happened though is we ended up taking on Santana. No regrets. No regrets. Love having her. I would choose have to have her overseen anywhere, seen anything in the world. So, but it, it did change our plans a bit, you know. So uh, we don't go and spend all those extra days, you know. And it's good, you know. It's good. It shows that you know we have something else happening in our life, and um, we're happy about that. So, but anyway, I just wanted to share some of that stuff with you guys. It was on my mind, and uh, but any of you guys who like to travel, have an opportunity to travel, may go out there see the world. And, and you know, it's not even see the world. You know, we have a lot of beautiful places here in the United States. Like people say, oh. You know, I want to go to Germany. I want to go to Italy. I want to go to Rome. And I'm like, those are nice. Those are nice. But I think before I go see the world, I'd like to at least see my country. I'd like to go to places. Um, I think the last place that was new to me that I went to was Oklahoma when Erica was in uh, basic training. Okay, I'll never go there again, though. It was freaking freezing. I don't get cold. And this cold was literally piercing me. I was freezing. Um, it's all, you know, flat plains. And I didn't see no buffaloes, but a lot of statues of buffaloes. So I'm assuming that that's the state, the state animal. Um, but that was the last place that um, that I went to. That was the, Oh, you know, which was nice too. Um, South Carolina. When Erica went to the Citadel, for those who don't know, she went... She, um, she got a scholarship to go to the Citadel. She chose to leave it and go straight into the Army. You know, Citadel just wasn't for her. Too slow-paced. I'm, I'm kind of glad she made the decision. But uh, South Carolina was really, really interesting to the point where we even thought about living there. But then I thought about it. I started driving around. I was like, ah. Uh. I mean, I love to see the historic stuff. I love to see the old houses. That, but at the same time, man, I like a little more room. I like more of a, like, I had an old historic house. I don't ever want to deal with that crap again. You know, you have to have a ton of money. Like, you have to have money where you're just really, really hooking it up. But, it, you know, if it's like a pet project and you're trying to build it slowly, it's expensive. You know, and if you're not, your heart's not into it, it ends up not being fun. You know? So, but if you have a chance to see the country or even start with your state, maybe there's places within your state or within your city that you haven't seen start from there start from your city you know and um and just enjoy it so but anyway guys i just want to chat with you about that for a little bit hoping uh, you guys all have a great night there's quite a few freestyle shows happening around the country hope you guys go see them go support them remember any phonies on there just throw your wristbands on put your fists up let people know but the rest of the content enjoy take pictures meet the artists, sing the songs. Uh, we're, we're very fortunate. We, we're involved with an incredible genre of music. I love it. And uh, thanks again for listening, man, all of you. And until tomorrow night, good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.